Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube vlog in which my sentimental thoughts come from my heart and also where my mental oddball shenanigans come from my brain. It's EML77 TV and I am Eric Lima. Welcome to episode 622. This is the 110th episode under the uh, CIQ guidelines set by um, Governor Baker and... Um, this has been a, a very surreal moment, shall we say, uh, during these 10, 110 episodes. I think we, and I think we started in March, was it the 24th or the 24th or the 25th of March when everything went down, and we are basically three months. So we're over like a 90 day quarantine that we've been under for well, quite a long time and uh, it's something that you know what amazes me is everything that's been happening over these 90 some odd days it's it's it's, not, it's surreal it's unreal here in Massachusetts unreal in this world unreal all over the place so it's gonna be a while till we get everything back um, back to the swing of things but uh, People say, "Oh, it's the new normal and all that." I'm not. I'm. I'm tired hearing the word "new normal." It's just. It's just that you know. It's just we're going back to a regular life, but with some changes to be made, and whether or not it will affect us, and this will affect us down the road. And I may go back to work this coming Monday. I'm not so sure. I'll check up my boss to see what what goes down, unless uh, unless we are, you know. Just uh, we we will see what happens, and and uh, for the time being, you know, I have not worked in three months, which is really um, it, it's it's really something that to be um, um, you know, yeah, a lot of stuff has gone down today, uh, tonight, um, uh, as you know, um. You know, on the last episode uh, of my vlog, I talked about Shai Gaspard um, passing away after being caught in a riptide current and washed ashore on Venice Beach and pronounced dead. Um, he was 39 years old. He saved his son. A lot of people call him a hero, a legend. Um, a lot of people, you know, and it is true. You know, it is true because a lot of people, um, he was a father too. He put his family first and he was a good man, according to a lot of superstars and friends of him. You you re read their tweets or you know made video tributes of him. How how much he was loved, and uh, you know a lot of you know young wrestlers looked up to him and all that. And um, so so a lot you know WWE and NXT paid a little tribute um, in memory of so. Um, a lot of funny memories that he had with the WWE. There was some funny moments, you know, and just, uh, you know, you know, so I'm just, uh, hmm. so anyways, um, so anyways, I am just, uh, It's something that um, it's something that uh, I am just you know um, very very happy and appreciative of the good life and uh, um, uh, and it's something that uh, you know. It was, it was something that um, I'll never forget. Uh, was it him for? Um, it was them and William Regal doing the dance. With William Regal's like, you know, it's like it's like, a, it's like a, you provide a GIF before a GIF, and I think it was pretty hilarious. Uh, when he took that, when they stole uh, Ron Simmons's car, which is hilarious. Uh, he took they took Jerry Lawler's. Um, laptop, which I think, and, and, and uh, they had Leo's personal belongings, and they were selling them on Survivor Series 2006. They made their debut in October 2006, and he bent, they pinned the Spurs squad, which won, were then the tag team champions at the time. 
who was in a major upset, which I uh, they could have booked him for those belts and could have won him. But you know, it is what it is. Um, oh, by the way, this is another dark episode. I figured you know this is my fourth one because I, because I, we all know the the uh, the social distancing quarantine thing kind of kind of winding down. We're you know about ninety days over nine, it was over three months worth. I mean, uh, it's about three months worth. I mean, the full month. If you count the, the half, the last half of March and you know a better part of May to the better part of May, that's what basically where it was. And uh, I don't know, last time was it March? I had to rely on winter gear to be outside and all that, which I don't have to do that now because by the time I get back to work, um, the weather will be graduating, uh, gra- graduating, uh, moderating more as we go along. And if barber shops are open, I can get this haircut. Because my hair's going out more out of control than Carlito. My goodness, we're all going to look like Carlito. And then before you know, we do a Carlito impression. Carlito says that's not cool. That's not cool. That's not cool, Carlito. Carlito says that's not cool. We're like, I spin the face of people who want to be cool people and chewing apples and spitting. And, you know, it, too funny. Too funny. Um, so, we got uh, some big news uh, from my family, just to let you know. Um, my, three of my sisters will be graduating high school. Uh, they were homeschooled, but they'll be graduating high school this coming weekend. Uh, they're going over. We're going. They're going. The family's going over to a friend's house to celebrate, and um, <clears throat> and but the family that that opened up their house to us is having some issues of their own, so they may have to make some changes there. So we'll see what happens. Um, also, my other sister, who uh, was like 21 years old, an adult, um, her and her husband are going to have another baby. Uh, a baby boy will be on his way. Uh, John James Alexander, I believe, or J.J. Alexander. So, uh, my, our little niece will be staying around with the, with his mother up there in Medford and um, be paying a visit. So, I'm sure that, that family will be looking forward to see Joel and Jesse and help them out. And because of what because what we have to deal with here, uh, as far as the, gra- the girls' graduation is concerned, they didn't want to, you know, inconvenience my family and for, or for that. So they're spending some time up there with with them, and we, 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 we're, they're leaving the dogs behind to um, keep an eye on us, which is going to be pretty to keep an eye on them. So that's you know pretty good per se. So we will see what happens this weekend. This weekend's going to be a, a wild and crazy weekend. So um, I'm expecting a lot of things to go down, a lot of things to happen, and we'll see. What, what the 411 is, and I got to call my boss this weekend and see whether or not if I'm going back to work or not, you know. But I think my schedule could change too as a result of all this uh, corona, all all this pandemic and what uh, will be the cleaning guidelines uh, from from at work. So I'll be expecting a lot of things. And the our mall's been almost clean outside. You know, there was not much to go with because it was a crazy moment. Um, and it's, it it was surreal, and um, I gotta say it's one of the crazy times ever. So I probably I'm probably gonna pack light as a result and not worry about much. So it's something that um, is a huge issue. So it's something that um, I'm gonna look into. So I'll call, uh, talk to my boss and call him and see what the story is and what the 411 is and. Uh, we go from there, and um, and uh, well, I went shopping at Target. Um, I, you know, everything has changed, so I couldn't find a lot of stuff. I bought some Seven Up, and obviously, you, know, you can see the bottles. Seven Up bottles—they're not beer bottles. I don't drink beer or anything like that. You know, you know, it's like I want to get some other than Coke. I'm getting tired of Coke. I love Coke, but I'm getting tired of it. Need to change it up a little bit. Give me some seven up. But also, I went to Target and I also bought this Sonic the Hedgehog DVD. Um, I've been a fan of Sonic. I'm, you know, I'm not a Sonic nut or anything like that. I've always been a gamer. And if I'm a gamer, I pick up this video, Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, first movie from Jim Carrey in quite a while too. So it was makes marks his comeback. And James Marsden, who plays Cyclops in the old X Men movies that, that that came out early. Early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, and this is a, he's in this too as a sheriff, so, and Sonic will be in it, and uh, they did change it, and look, look, look like the actual Sonic in the game, so uh, I can't wait to watch this, this is, 
Uh, I saw promos of this movie, and I thought it would be pretty good. I wanted to see it. It w- it was in e- early in February, um, Valentine's Day, it came out. Didn't get a chance to see it, but then uh, but then we got this. So that's another that's another uh, thing. Um, this is going to be a good movie to watch. I'm looking forward to it when I get everything set up over there. Um, also, um, Pier 1 Imports will be cl- permanently closing. Uh, they also filed for bankruptcy and as well. So our mall could be losing two stores, and that, that could be, and that could be, you know, what because a lot of things are changing. Also, the and the mall's been a dying, like I said, like I said a few episodes ago um, of of my vlog. Um, let's see, back at six thousand six hundred ten, that's what twelve episodes ago about the uh, mall being an endangered species, and you see all these stores closed, down, and we don't know what the pen, which stores the pandemic will affect. And it could hurt a lot of stores when we come back to open because, I mean, we don't know. Um, we we're supposed to have a restaurant where the Sears Auto Center is, but then it, now the pandemic has uh, really put those plans to a halt on that. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'll probably find out. I don't know. I don't know if I want to divulge more information when I get back to work and all that. I'm just going to be uh, just going to be very careful guidelines and everything else and it's going to be a big challenge for me to get used to these changes and you know and all that being semi-autistic um having asperger syndrome it is very difficult you know, difficult to get used to these changes and you know you're trying to adjust every you know adjust everything in life it isn't going to be easy and uh you know and i don't expect it to be easy and that's the way it is it is what it is so We'll see what happens. I'm um, kind of looking forward to getting back to work, to be honest with you, but uh, we'll see how things develop. And, you know, I know I get paid every other two weeks, and uh, I don't have to worry about my vacations. And here I am, and I'm thinking about, you know, thinking about, you know, it's like I had a, I had a month's worth of, month of vacation and, and all that good stuff. So it's like, um, this is technically, you know, what's going to happen in the future, you know? Um, uh, because of this, there's you know, lots of theories. Lots of theories about what's going to happen in the future, but I just want to worry about the here and now. I want to worry about one day at a time. You know, I want to worry about you know getting through this week. I want to get you know and mentally prepare myself to get back to work. That way, you know, and I may have to make phone calls to my boss and see or my boss and see or or check any information about the mall online to find out what to do, where to go, you know, what to do. And all that good stuff. So I'll probably wait up. So there could be changes in that job too. I may, I may not be there any longer. You know, I, I, you know sometimes you know you're, in, you know you're uncertain about your future at the job because you know, if hours get cut, you know, because of this whole thing, you may, I may consider, uh, like when Ruby Tuesday happened, when Ruby Tuesday, when everything happened at Ruby Tuesday, um, um. When in 2010, when my boss got, my boss Chris Vieira got fired, um, the new manager made a lot of changes and gave us a lot of hours to work with to make sure that everything is on the up and up. And then they started cutting a lot of hours, and then they wanted to get rid of the old guard and put in new, fresh people with energy and all that. And I think the way to, because the old guard liked, you know, some of those old guarders liked the way the restaurant was run. When Chris Vieira was in charge, when everybody was in charge at the time, but but the corporate wanted to change all that, and they did, and and then it affected all of us. And, you know, they decided to cut down the dishwashing shifts that I have to just one day, and that that's when I left there and started working at the Swansea Mall for a couple of months. And then when they had somebody in the out or um yeah the outside worker and the outside uh, the exterior housekeeper, they fired. You know, they let him go, and they needed help, so. And so I was willing to get transferred over there and take that job. I don't mind sacrificing 14 hours worth. So, and that's what I did. I sacrificed hours just to get you know, work closer to home because because Swansea was very was a very far away place. And this was happened 10 years ago, and, and who would have thought 10 years from from then, and you know, 10 years now, uh, fast forward 10 years later, I would be you know working. Um, I would be at the mall. But uh, technically, I'm not working. I, you know, I didn't think this all, all thing was going to happen. So it's something to deal with, and uh, 
like I said, you know, malls, like I said, the mall is changing um, in the country. The mall in America is changing, and um, you know, so so if you um, go to your local um, stores and if they're open, and you see this, get it. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. They also re- released a Latin the DVD of the animated version back from 92 again. So I didn't get that because I already have it, obviously. Uh, so, oh, well, so, so that's something to, uh, you know, something to look forward to, anyways. Um, so have I have I bought any video games? Uh, no, I bought a Nintendo another Nintendo eShop gift card for. The Nintendo Switch, so it's something to um, think about. I know Mortal Kombat's coming out with another version of Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath. I was hoping that Street Fighter 5 would come out for the Switch or something like that, or and the Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And I, you know, create controls for them. And I'm very sad they did not. Capcom did not do that. So it's something that, um, uh, something you know, just it's you know, I would like to see that happen and all that well so how am I feeling right now pretty good feeling pretty good and um, very very relaxed can't wait to go back to work um, be honest so maybe I'll, maybe a lot of changes that are going to go ha- are going to happen at work which would not be um, which which I mean, it all depends on how we are I look at it you know, business wise it may not be you know, our our wise it may not be as top. I may be thinking about looking looking for another job, and that's basically what I need to do and what I have to do if I'm going to survive. And um, personally, don't know what the future holds for me. But right now, if I worry about the future, I'm going to be acting all depressed and all that, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to think about the here and now. I want to think about um, one day at a time. And it, technically, it is Thursday because I'm. I'm up at 1 o'clock in the morning talking about this, so this may not be the last dark episode. Hopefully I get back to a regular, you know, sometimes, you know, having you have a regular routine and all of a sudden something happens and it changes all that and you're, you got a new routine ahead of you. And that is get up, get breakfast, go on the internet and stay on the internet for hours on end. And, you know, and usually go on Zoom and all that and I'm trying to get used to the Zoom thing with my uh, church peeps and um, it's just... Yeah, lots of craziness, lots of changes, so next week's going to be very interesting, to say the least, as we're heading into June, and as you know, this could be, the um, this summer could, could be the most, la- could be the lousiest summer ever, because right now, what what is happening is all the summer events are canceled or postponed till after Labor Day, unfortunately, and um, that means no Portuguese feast. That's done. That, uh, that's 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 gone. Um, the Wales Sea Festival is postponed, not canceled, but postponed because they still want to do it because it's tradition. It's part of our identity in New Bedford. I know it's not popular with a lot of folks, um, especially with CCG one one seven one Chris Gearton. I know he's been hating on the festival, all so to speak. He's not been liking it. Well, unfortunately, because unfortunately. You know the festival, ha- the Wales Sea Festival, has not been as popular as much since the whole fight happened. I believe, I personally believe that whole fight ruined the Wales Sea Festival. You know, it wasn't a New Bedford Police Union, it wasn't Alan Richard, it wasn't, you know, you know that. I think the, the the people that got involved in the fight, those 23 people that that fought the gangs there, they ruined the Wales Sea Festival. And I'm sure some of those 23 people, I don't know, or if not all of them. I've got to be very, very ashamed of themselves of what they did. You know, they ruined a New Bedford tradition, and and the, and the festival has not been been the same since that. And it was almost closed down because of those twenty three people. To me, that's that fight started a domino effect of things. You know, I'm sure Alan Richard did everything he could to try to bring the Wellington Festival back back to prominence, but unfortunately, he couldn't do it. His hands were tied. Because the police union, at least the police department, did it, put a curfew on the Wellness State Festival. And the police union felt bad. They decided to do it until they won a race. And so they used, um, used the festival as a power, political power play against Mayor Mitchell to 
you know, basically cancel the Wellness Day Festival at that point. And, you know, it was almost canceled until Mike Sylvia decided to step up, and he's been a volunteer since he, at the festival since he was a teenager, and said, that's it, I'm, I'm going to take charge of this festival, and I'm going to get it back to its former glory. And that's what Michael Sylvia said exactly what he was going to do. And uh, like he said, in the best decision he made was to postpone the Wales City Festival for right now. It could happen in the fall, because it is supposed to be the 50th anniversary of the Wales City Festival, because... You know, like I said, it has not been as popular, and um, with the with the feast canceled, I suggested that you should put on the Wednesday festival because of that reason, because that will give the uh, the festival an advantage, so to speak. So, possibly it was a smart move on Mike Sylvia's part, President Mike Sylvia's part, to have the festival postponed till after Labor Day, and with the and with the Portuguese feast canceled until next year. This is an opportunity for the Wellness Day Festival to get back to its former glory. And, have it, you know, if you cancel it, they won't, capital, won't be able to capitalize on it. So that's the thing, and then that's kind of a smart move to postpone it instead of canceling it altogether. So, like I said, it's um, a lot of changes, a lot of things happening, and uh, we will see what develops down the road. And, um, who knows? Um, but right now, one day at a time, we're going to have some fun about it. Worry about one day at a time. We'll be cool. All right? Just um, stay in there, hang in there, keep focused. We're getting there. Baby steps, folks. Baby steps. And uh, that's how I feel. So, that's all the time we have on the show. It is one, 10 past 1 in the morning. I'm going to have to eat a midnight mid- mid- snack because I'm hungry right now. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to want to talk about... Now, before we conclude the video, um, you know, it was really tough to talk about AEW, NXT, uh, you know, trying to watch them and then they got the new show, Ultimate Tag. Ultimate Tag is like the regular game of tag with with an American Gladiators feel, w, slash WWE feel to it. Uh, you know, uh, the, the Ultimate Taggers or like the Gladiators with WWE-like personalities. You got, you know, regular Joes. Working regular jobs and just you know, and being athletes and working out and all that good stuff to be challenging. It's it's crazy and all these other and then you get points and whoever has the you know whoever um, ends up being the having the most points being the ultimate you know tag champion that gets ten thousand dollars and is holds by the Watt brothers of the NFL JJ TJ and I forget the other. Watt Brothers name, but I'm a Patriots fan, I don't care. But I, I decided to watch because it, it, it brought back the American Gladiators type feel of the 90s, so it's going to be something to uh, look forward to. And then, I haven't watched much AEW. I know that uh, Moxley and Brody Lee are on a collision course for, towards um, Double or Nothing. I know there was a, five, a 10-man attack between the Inner Circle and the Elite. Uh, that's something I'm looking forward to. Um, who know uh, the TNT Championship Tournament Final between Archer and Cody Rhodes? I know that's going to be, and um, and while on NXT, you got two matches that happen that will be happening at NXT Takeover in your house. The um, the first match will be Tommaso Ciampa versus Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross and Scarlett are a deadly couple. All WWE couples, watch your backs. And another match that will happen it will be Damian Priest one on one with Finn Balor. I know Oni Lorcan and uh, Danny Burch won a matchup against Ever Rise. They'll be, they want to challenge Imperium for those tag team championships. So it'll be very interesting to see those two teams go at it. Um, you know, Timothy Thatcher and Matt Riddle won a battle in a steel uh, in a steel cage. So I thought that match should happen at in your house, uh, NXT Takeover in your house. Um, Charlotte came out during the main event. Uh, Io Shirai and um, Rhea Ripley. Yo Shirai's got a new Titan Tron. Gotta check it out. It's really cool. Lost in the Sky. Gotta like that. And they, she also came out with a t-shirt, which I'm planning on getting um, as I um, do the thing, and I do it real well. Praise God. Um, also, what's what's happening? Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if a triple threat match will happen in your um, WWE um, NXT TakeOver in your house. 
I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to happen. Um, Adam Cole fed up with uh, Adam Cole's fed up with uh, Velveteen Dream. There'll be a matchup. I'm sure they'll. He's going to be negotiating table next week with um, with um, William Regal. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Roderick Strong picked up a victory over Dexter Loomis. Loomis snapped and attacked Roderick Strong. And, and uh, Drake Maverick picked up a victory over um, Kushida. And They'll have a triple threat match next week, and whoever wins that will face um, El Hijo del Fantasma in the Cruiserweight Championship Finals. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see, see what happens down the road it's between Jake Atlas, uh, Kushida, and Drake Maverick. So we'll see what happens there. I know Drake Maverick's been released by the company. This could be his last match with the company. Who uh, so? And if they decide an NXT interim Cruiserweight Champion, you know. It will be something to, um, it'll be something, that match will probably happen at um, NXT TakeOver in your house as well. Um, so, a lot of things are happening, a lot of things are changing, so uh, we'll see what happens. And um, uh, we know Hikaru Shida, um, this is, we're going back to AEW, I'm sure at double or nothing, Nyla, the Beast Nyla Rose will defend her title, Women's Championship, against Hikaru Shida. I'm hoping Hikaru wins that match. Sheeta put Nyla Rose pull it to the table. So this is going to be a very interesting fight, to say the least. So I'll probably, we'll see what happens, all that. And uh, a lot of things are happening. And a lot of things happening in wrestling and everything else. And um, we'll see. All right. Um, I will see you guys later. You guys have a wonderful day. and um, wonderful morning, I should say. It's already morning. I about to stay up late and watch some YouTube videos or something like that. You know, I'm trying to spend my last days as uh, being in quarantine before I go back to work. And I have to get that, try and get that routine back of going to bed and waking up early and all that good stuff. Unless they change the schedule, we'll see what happens. And just, um, you know, because sometimes schedule changes because a lot of things are happening. You know, we lose money, we lose hours, we'll probably lost a lot of money. During this time, we, we had Burlington open up. It just opened up and everything else. So it's something. So it is going to be a very difficult um, time indeed. And we'll find out what's going on. So so challenges down the road. But right now, one day at a time. All right. Um, Sonic DVD. Go pick it up if you can. I, we'll watch this see what happens. Um, we are heading towards... Double or nothing for AEW and WWE um, NXT TakeOver in your house. Now it's next after Double or Nothing, AEW Double or Nothing. And they'll have a casino ladder match as well, so it's going to be something to behold. So we'll see what happens, all right? We'll, we'll see. Um, I'll see you in episode 623 of this vlog of EML 77 TV. This is Eric Lima signing off. Until next time, my friends. See ya.